what happens at a bond hearing here in the state of Florida? Well, we attorneys have to jump through a couple hoops for our clients. Number one, we have to establish that the client is not a flight risk and also that the client is not a danger to the community. Now, how do we do that? That is what happens at a bond hearing. The first thing that happens is I'm going to go to the podium and I'm going to say, judge, we'd like you to hear from my client's mother or brother, and we're going to explain why you're not a flight risk. The way we're gonna explain that is, my client was born here. He went to Rollins College over here. He owns a house over here, et cetera, et cetera. He has so many ties to the community that you can't think he's going to just skip town because of this criminal charge. Number two, he's not a danger to the community. The state is going to counter what happens at the bond hearing is they're going to say, wait a second, judge, you should not either set this bond or you should not grant a reduction of the bond because look at this guy's criminal history. Look at this guy's failure to appear history. How have you done on other criminal cases, if you have any other? If you keep failing to appear in other cases, the judge gonna tighten the belt a little on this case and not maybe reduce the bond so much or not loosen the conditions or maybe not even set a bond if it's a violation of probation or something like that. So those are the types of things that are going to happen at a bond hearing. It's a pretty simple procedure. I want you to know that legally, just because you can't afford the bond set, that does not mean that the bond is excessive, right? It just happens that we have in Central Florida a bond schedule. And that is typically what a judge should do. You can look at that bond schedule for your charge. And most of the time, that is going to be what your bond is set at. Only on some rare occasion, sometimes more often than I think, but they go off the bond schedule and they go much higher and much higher. And that is when we attorneys come in and we try to fix that. There was a case here in Central Florida, Sylvester v. State. And in Sylvester, he was accused of three grand thefts of the first degree. Those are F1 grand thefts. And the judge set the bond at $750,000 for those three grand thefts. Now, the attorney did a bond motion and got the bond down to 600 grand. And that attorney, rightfully so, filed an appeal and said that is not a low enough reduction. And the appellate court in Daytona actually lowered it from 600 down to 15,000, right? Now, if you remember, bondsmen are gonna take 10% of the total bond in order to get you out. So that initial bond is 750,000, that family had to pay $75,000 to the bondsman to get that person out. It was good thing they hired an attorney that appealed the case and appealed the $600,000 bond that was lowered to and got it all the way down to 15 grand. That's fantastic. But this doesn't always work that way. That's just one example of how things can go and a loved one is sitting in jail and it's in Central Florida. I hope that you'll give our office a call. This is the type of thing we do. We handle cases here in Orlando, Osceola, Seminole County, Lake County, Volusia, you name it, we'd like to help out.